It's just after 9am and I'm going to try and build a full table of fantasy terrain in 24 hours. And well, we're starting right now. I better get going. Obviously quite a lot to get through. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some XPS hills. I'm going to take a big giant sheet of 30mm XPS into the garden, put it over the bin and start cutting. I'm doing this outside because it's going to make quite a bit of mess and if I did it inside in the little room, quite frankly I'd spend most of the 24 hours just cleaning up. So what I'm going to do is just cut it into various different sizes of squares and rectangles. I use my head quite literally to actually break some of the squares up because I wanted to do it quickly. Don't do that, be sensible. That obviously takes a little while. And then I'm going to cut those squares into sort of more rounded squares. So I'm just going to cut off the corners basically so it's a little bit more hill shape. Now you could do this with a hot wire cutter but I'm going to avoid that where possible. There is one part of this build that I definitely am going to use it and that's coming up next. So approaching the one hour mark and we've got all our XPS shapes. We now need to turn them into something that look a little bit more like hills. So I'm going to do this one inside on the camera and then yeah, I'll probably do the rest outside. So we're going with a very classic style here, which is to just to cut in these little triangles. So you're literally just going to cut in an angle on one side, cut in an angle at the other and then flick the form away. You've got to do that for your whole hill. There's other different ways to carve hills and I'm not going to go into it here, but I'll probably make a video at some point doing different methods. And well, yeah, quite frankly, obviously you've got to do that for every single part of your hill. I obviously did that in the room and you can see it already made quite a bit of a mess. So I go outside and do the rest. Once I've done what I've got is some li larger bits and some smaller bits and I'm going to like allocate them into hills so that some of the smaller bits can get glued onto some of the larger bits and they'll have like two tiers. I think on one I actually make three tiers but I, I wasn't putting much thought into this I was just going as quickly as possible. Once I got the shape of my hills literally just going to cover the, the whole of the tops in PVA. I'm actually using this fast drying wood glue. Cover the whole thing in the top of it and just sprinkle on sand. I'm using bird sand for this. It would have been nice to do like different size rocks and stuff like that but you know I did not have the time. To speed things up I'm going to be using an XPS safe spray. So don't use a normal spray can on XPS unless you know what you're doing because it is possible but it's a little complicated. These sprays from the army painter though, they can literally be sprayed onto the foam. So I spray the whole thing with this black including the sand and then I do the same thing with a foam safe matte varnish again from the army painter. I spray the whole thing in that and then I'm a little bit confident that I'm not going to melt the foam so then I spray the hills, the side of the hills grey and the tops brown. I sort of wish I just left it as it was with like a bit of grey and brown mix from the spray can but what I actually did was go in and paint the sand with a burnt umber. I regret doing that I just don't think it was worth it and I'm doing this all in the garden because it was a nice summer day it's actually I think the longest days of the year so I let that dry and then for the rocks on the side I'm just going to dry brush in a lighter grey and then an even lighter grey do that all over ideally you know you want to be more careful than I am but I'm trying to go at rapid pace for the ground I'm going to dry brush that in a lighter brown that's literally it for the hills for now just approaching the seven hour mark and the hills are pretty much done they've taken me approximately two and a half to three hours longer than I hoped um, I am going to flock them I'm just undecided if I'm going to do static grass or foam flock so I'm sort of leaving that for a little bit the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually eating my dinner and then I'm going to be working on the building ruins so for the building ruins I'm obviously going to use my hot wire cutter I know I just said I don't really want to use one but for this it's whilst it's possible to make building ruins without I just thought it was the simplest easiest thing to do and I think this night I was actually watching the England game so I was just doing this cutting out the bricks on the hot wire cutter watching the England football game and I was just like yep this is fine I'm making my bricks two centimeters by one centimeter and I just make as many bricks as I can with the hot wire cutter so I cut out lots and lots of bricks and I put them in an empty paint can and I go and shake them whilst in the garden embarrassing myself. For the bases I'm using EPVC I just cut out various shapes so for the bigger buildings they're sort of like roundish squares obviously if you're doing like little sections of wall then you can do smaller pieces and I sort of cut it in a way where I'm beveling it at the same time as cutting it. I would recommend not doing that because I think it's probably a little bit more dangerous. I realise I'm probably going to need something more interesting if I'm going to do a bigger piece and that includes a window. So I make this little template for this window which basically manages to keep the format of the building intact because it's four centimetres in height and four centimetres wide which is obviously like 
just a section of bricks. There's no weird measuring involved. So I make that into card first and then I just use that to put it onto some XPS that obviously I cut out with the hot wire cutter. Texture that with some aluminium foil. And then, you know, building the actual ruins is very simple and which you're going to layer it brick by brick. I'm only doing one layer instead of two here for obvious reasons. I'm using hot glue to glue all this together, including the windows. Obviously that's just for speed, but it's actually probably the best thing because it's easier to work with. So the 12 hour mark has just hit and I'm going to stop it there because I'm going to be doing this in two parts because I have a wife and kid and I don't really want to annoy them both. In the morning of the next day, I think it's time to crack on. I'm probably going to make another one of these because quite frankly, I think it looks fine and I should be able to do the next one quite quickly. So I'm going to crack on with that. Then I'll do trees and hopefully we'll get to some funky extra bits towards the end of the day, but we'll have to wait and see. So in the morning, I just started off baking a bigger piece. And what I'm going to do here is sort of like a full building, but with two of the corners removed. I realized I probably need a door. <laughs> so I had to just uh, fake a door using some bricks. Cover the whole base in sand. Same paint scheme for the buildings. Pretty much going to spray them in the XPS safe black paint. Then I'm going to use brown and gray to paint the buildings and the ground. Again, I shouldn't have manually painted in the burnt umber for the ground. I should have just left it as the gray. Same thing with the dry brush on those. Light shades of gray on the rock, light shade of brown on the ground. Then we're going to move on to trees and I'm just going to take two different styles of armature. I was going to make 12 trees, but because of time reasons, I was like, actually, I'll just make nine. All I do is I snip off the base and glue the trees together at the same time that I glue them onto these 16 mil MDF bases, which are just pre-cut circles. And then for ease of use, I literally just take some filler that's got some brown paint in it and just try and fill in the cracks between the trees because it's unsightly. Obviously you need to move your armature so that it's more tree-like. The woodland scene armatures are 2D essentially and you've got to like manipulate them so that they look more tree-like. You can cut off little branches and stuff like that. It's completely up to you. And then I'm going to rip off some rubberized horser. It's not the best material but it is quick. Literally I'm going to hot glue these onto the ends of the branches of the armature and um, once you've done that for all your trees I'm going to go in with some scissors and just cut off some of the loose ends. Obviously, you know, you sort of want trees to be airy rather than like a big clump of wiry mesh that's sort of like coming back on itself and stuff like that. Bevel the bases, cover the base in PVA and sand again. And then I want something that represents the area of the forest. So I'm going to cut out some large circle-ish shapes of this EPVC, obviously beveled as well. Cover that in PVA and sand. And then I spray the whole thing in a army paint, a fur brown, but I was running out of all of my colors. So I sprayed it in this fur brown and then I was like, I'll go over it with my burnt umber spray, but I ran out of burnt umber spray, which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Dry brush the ground in a lighter brown. And then to fuck the trees, I'm using some classic yacht varnish. Just going to spray it onto the foliage and sprinkle on various different flocks. I think I used Woodland Scenics, Medium Green and Light Green. We're near the 21 hour mark and I have a bit of a dilemma. So there's three hours left and pretty much everything now is at the stage where I could flock it. So my hills I could flock it, my buildings I could flock, the trees are outside because they smell but all I need to do is flock the base. But those three things I pretty much wanted to achieve in day one, so I'm obviously behind. And I had a list of things I wanted to build between four and six different things. I think it'll probably take me about an hour to flock them, which would then leave me with two hours. So I can either play safe, just flock it up, call it done, be like, oh, job's done. Those three things are fine. It fills up the table. Or I could try and push myself and run the risk of failing the 24 hour bit. So what I'm actually going to do is try and make the extra things. I'm going to do them very quickly and try and cut a few corners, but I'm going to try and do it. Once I get to the 23 hour mark, I might have to down tools and just flock everything that I've done because I want to try and make sure I'm in the 24 hour mark. Well, that's what we're going to do. So I started off thinking, oh, I'll actually make a pond. So I make like a pond using, again, EPVC as the base. And then I take some Luke APS Geek Gaming modeling compound. It really does dry quickly. Made like a rim around the base and set that off to dry. At this point, though, I sort of realized that, yeah, I'm going to paint it brown. I sort of painted it brown when it was still wet because I was eager. It didn't really work, so I sort of ditched that. But I wanted to make some rocky ground terrain. So what I'm going to use here, and this was a bit of a gamble, was I take some plaster of Paris, which we just mix it up as normal and fill some rock molds. Now, I needed this to work first time. I did not have time for these rock molds to fail. The first one I popped sort of came crumbling out and I was like, oh, but thankfully I managed to leave them and actually get them. You know, they're not perfect, but they worked fine. 
and then I literally again mixed up some Geek Gaming modeling compound, whacked that on my EPBC bases and used the modeling compound itself to surround the little rocks that I'd made and that basically kept it in place. Then I sprayed that black because I didn't have any brown which was unfortunate and then I tried to do the grown in brown and I tried to do the box in grey but I was definitely definitely running out of time. I am very much on the brink of disaster here. About 48 minutes to go and I haven't actually finished anything. The rocky ground that I was painting, it's still all wet from the modelling compound so it's not quite ready to be painted but I've tried it, it's all merging into one. The pond obviously I'm never going to get the resin off in time. I haven't flocked the rest of the stuff. So I'm going to give the rocky ground like the 48 minutes and I'm going to go and flock everything so I at least get some of the stuff done. Pretty much a disaster at the moment, we'll see if we can salvage it. This is a simple case of covering it all in PVA and flocking it. I'm using three different flocks. So I'm using medium green, light green and dark green. It's actually called weeds. And you'll see over time the light is going to get darker and darker. And occasionally I'll have to bump up the ISO on the camera to make it brighter. But yeah, I flock absolutely everything. Same technique on all of it. Cover the whole ground in as much PVA as I can. Sprinkle on the flock. And it was just a like, case of going against the time. And he was like, am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? And quite frankly, I don't really make it. <laughs> this is weird. This side in the garden. Making terrain. 10 o'clock at night. I'm weirdly actually a little bit nervous, you know. As I was flocking this, the timer was going down. The light was going down. It's like near the, nearly the longest day of the year, but it's like late at night, maybe like 10 p.m. or something. The clock's running down. I'm sat in the garden like a lunatic, just wondering... Am I actually going to finish this? And I sort of get it done near enough. Get the rocky ground done and um, yeah, I'm happy enough. So it's been a few days now and I did try to add a few little grass tufts and some lichen and stuff like that. But quite frankly, the time was getting on. So I, I stopped. So 24 hours, 9 minutes and 34 seconds. And let's see what I ended up with. So this is the full board that I have made and my first thoughts are, well, I have probably made too much terrain. That's everything that I built, excluding the pond that obviously I didn't finish. I do think that if the pond would have been finished, it would have been nice to add a bit of colour to it, maybe a little bit of blue. Don't tell Geek Gaming. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It would have been nice to add like a little bit of detailing, you know, maybe to the hills and stuff. Like a little few more extra tufts and that kind of stuff and some clump foliage. But it is what it is on the, on the whole board. I'm pretty happy with it. So that's it. Yep, just a little bit over 24 hours, but I made a lot of terrain. I'm pretty happy with the way that it looks. Thank you to my Patreons. I do really appreciate you guys. If you want to see more videos like this, then, you know, please like and subscribe. Have a most beautiful day. Goodbye.